everyone! Welcome or welcome back to the Tarot Adventure. My name is Robin and I'm so so happy to have you here today for another pick a card reading. And today is gonna be a really special one. But first things first, I want to really thank all of my beautiful subscribers for the support. It really means so much. Thank you for your likes, your comments. You guys are amazing. And if it is your first time here, do consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of all of my future videos. I post pick a card readings every week. My favorite topics are love, relationships, spirituality, but every now and then I like to surprise you with something fun and uplifting. So this is my intention for today's video. And you've probably noticed that it is going to be a very special one. Just by looking at all of these groups, I have seven groups for you today. I really got carried away. I've been in this really joyful mood throughout the day and I thought, why not take advantage of it and do a beautiful, uh, fun video for you guys. So today we will be looking at everything there is to know about your future child or your future children. We will be looking at their personality, their zodiac sign, their interests, their likes, how they interact with other people, what kind of road they are most likely to take in life. And also, if you stick around until the end, we will try to take a little peek at the sex of the baby. I know there's quite a few of you who might be curious about that little detail. So, as I was saying, we have seven different groups today. Each of them has its own oracle card from the illustrated crystallary deck and also its little colorful candle which we will light up during your reading. So, with that being said, let me introduce you to all of the seven groups. It feels so strange to say that, but I'm really excited, I'm really pumped. and. Uh, I can't wait to connect with this beautiful, happy energy of childhood. I will of course be uh, providing close-ups of each of the cards and their corresponding candles. I know that perhaps the lighting conditions here aren't ideal, so there is a little glare, but don't worry, I will be providing close-ups of all of the cards on the table so you have an easier time choosing. All right, so let's get into the groups. For group one, we have the card representing green fluoride with a five purple birds all flying in different directions. The phrase, is this mine? And also the purple or violet, I think it's supposed to be, candle. It looks a bit more like lavender to me, but these are actually candles from a chakra set. So the color is technically supposed to be purple or violet. Okay. Thought I'd mention that little detail. So that is group one. Next, for group two, we have the card representing lipidolite with this beautiful unicorn peeking through the pages of a book. The words, breathe in your trueness and also the blue candle. That is group two. For group three, we have the card representing ruby. We have the spider here sitting on a ruby heart. The words, you, only more so, as well as the orange candle. That is group three. For group four, we have the card representing turquoise, with the two bluebirds returning turquoise eggs to their nest. The words, find your way home, and also the indigo candle. That is group four. All right. Next, we have group five with the card representing rose quartz, this gorgeous lion staring straight into your heart, and the words, a different kind of love, and also the red candle to go with it. That is group five. For group six, we have the card representing the emerald with the image of a gray cat hiding behind the lantern, the words, choose your intention, as well as the green candle. That is group six. And finally, for group seven, we have the peridot or peridot 
with the image of a chalice surrounded by four animals, the squirrel, the sparrow, the butterfly, and the snail, with the words, so much life in you, and also the yellow candle. So here you go. Here are the seven groups. If you have decided already, you will find your own group or your own groups in the timestamps below. And feel free to watch as many groups as you feel called to, as uh, you may have more than one child in mind. So you can watch one group for each child. I feel that they will, they will each have their own unique personality. And I'm already so curious to find out. If you're still here, I will also take a moment to cleanse the energy. I love to do that before each reading. Alright, so you can take a deep breath right now. Relax. Alright, so with that being said, let's get into the video. Go ahead and uh, click your own timestamps down below. And I will see you in a moment. Bye! Hello group one! Welcome to your reading. So today we're gonna look at everything there is to know about your future child. We will be getting oracle cards, we will be uh, looking at uh, possible zodiac signs, traits, uh, likes and wants and hobbies and a whole bunch of things. We will really try to understand them, really try to see what kind of person uh, they will be, what kind of relationship you will have, what kind of relationships they will have with other people around them. And at the end, we will also swing our little pendulum to try to get a hint on the gender for those of you who are interested. Let me just light up your candle real quick and we will begin. Alright, so for group one, I light this candle with the intention of gaining clarity on their future child, everything there is to know. Please help us today, spirit. Okay. So with this card, is this mine? I'm really getting the feeling that um, your child will be a very empathic person. And um, sometimes what happens uh, to people who have a lot of empathy, they will really uh, get to feel a lot of emotions, pick up a lot of feelings from those around them, their friends, their family, or uh, anyone they get to interact with really. And um, as they uh, get older, get more mature and start to understand this process a lot better, um, they will uh, start to know the difference between uh, their own thoughts and emotions and feelings and uh, those belonging to the people around them. So they will finally be able to um, ask themselves, is this mine? Is this feeling, this emotion, um, this thought mine? Or am I picking it up from someone else? Because when you realize that it is just your empathy at play, then it is much easier to release um, these emotions, which can sometimes be quite burdensome. All right, with that being said, let's get a few oracle cards and let's get some tarot to gain some understanding on your child. Let's see what spirit will tell us today. Group one's child. Group one's child, please. So, we have ego with communion. All right. We will get a card from this deck. It is uh, the spider and passion flower with creative ingenuity. Let's get a couple of cards from here. This is a tarot deck, but it is a little bit special in the representations and the suits. They are not the typical suits um, from the Rider Waite style tarot. So, we have number 15, Journey. We have Seven of Water, and then we also have the Six of Water. 
All right. We will get a couple of cards from this Oracle deck. We have the Merlin, number 33, Guidance, Mentorship, Teacher of the Old Ways. What else? And we also have Silver Sisters. They, time to take protection from toxic thoughts and energy. Okay? Um, let's get some tarot. We have three of earth, which is the three of pentacles, and then we also have the world. All right, and I have here months of the year for possibly some clue um, about their birth date and their birth month. So we have here June. So possible zodiac signs would be Gemini and Cancer. We also have January. So this would be Capricorn and Aquarius. Okay, we also have here a little bag of attributes, personality traits, um, hobbies. There's a bunch of hobbies in here. There's some um, details regarding the looks. We also have some zodiac signs in here. So a bunch of things. Let's see what we get. these. So let's see what we got. We got some hobbies. So we have cycling, violin. These are all possible things that they might be into. We have here a fiery person, someone who might get angry easily. We also have, we got also saxophone. So a couple of musical instruments. We have Caring, someone who, again, is empathic and cares about other people. We have skateboarding as a hobby. We have short-tempered, again, so, <laughs> um, this confirms the other message. What else? Serious, okay. Private. Sweet to counteract some of that uh, possibly misplaced anger sometimes. We have Night Owl. What else? Logical. We have Antorsi. And we have White. So this could represent a color that they really like. This is not a physical attribute. I didn't mean it like that. Um, I just mean it in the sense that I just mean it um, in regards to a color preference or perhaps a season like winter. So this is really interesting. The first insight that I'm getting right off the bat is that with the Silver Sisters, for some of you, we might be talking here about twins, identical twins who have a similar personality and uh, they almost function as a unit. They complete each other's sentences, they read each other's thoughts, they like to dress in a similar way. This will only be for some of you, but I think it is very special that this particular card came out in one of the groups. Now the message on the card reads like this, time to take protection from toxic thoughts and energy. So going back to my initial feelings, about the oracle card that you chose. I am really, really sensing that your child will be very empathic, very intuitive, and very in touch with other people's emotions. So um, being able to uh, pick those up at a subconscious level, and while they are small, they will not necessarily be aware of it. And that might cause a lot of anger, a lot of outbursts, uh, because it is quite a heavy kind of experience to uh, just uh, pile up and pile up on other people's emotions throughout the course of a day. When you're small, you can't really separate your own emotions from those of other people. So at times, it, this may be quite overwhelming for them and they may lash out 
trying to um, ease some of the tension. So when they are small, they may be perceived as um, short-tempered or uh, prone to outbursts of rage and anger. Uh, they might very well um, throw a lot of tantrums. But this is not who they really are. They are actually a very sweet, a very loving and caring person. Almost too caring. Almost too in touch with everyone else. I see them almost mirroring all of the energies around them with the ego card and communion. It, it's like they commune, it, it's like they almost blend into the energy of whatever room they are in. And they go deep, they go really deep here with the six of water. Um, your child, right from the very beginning, right from the time uh, when they are a baby, they will have a lot of re rich and deep emotions and they will be quite perceptive about them so don't be surprised if they describe in great detail how they feel about a particular situation a particular event um, that happened over the course of their day maybe one of their friends was uh, mean to them um, maybe one of the teachers treated them unfairly and they will really have a tendency to take all of that to the heart and really dive deep into their own emotions. With the Seven of Water here, we have the image um, of an oasis in the desert or in the savanna, a place where all animals gather and share um, this precious resource, a place where all rivalry and the, the predatory instinct um, gets put aside for a second, while the animals nourish their bodies. What I see here for your child is that um, right from the very beginning they will have a, a very strong sense of fairness. They will be respectful of rules. Even as they are very young, they will understand the importance of sharing and they might surprise you oftentimes um, when um, they would like to share a bit of their food or they will kindly allow another child to play with their toy. Um, even though this is uh, something that young children don't typically do. But there's almost an understanding that uh, there, we are all equal and um, we must work, work together. And uh, going back to that perceptiveness of other people's emotions, they will um, really understand when uh, someone else is feeling sad about some issue. And um, they will try to share an object, uh, uh, some possession of theirs, um, in hopes of comforting that other person. With a three of earth here, I see your child as um, being gifted with some special talent that you will notice from the time they are very small. And the interesting thing about it is that um, as they get older, um, they will continue to dedicate themselves to that particular endeavor, to that activity. Uh, they will continue to invest their time and their effort, um, work very hard so that they can get better and better. I see a lot of dedication here. I see a lot of commitment um, to the things that uh, they enjoy and that they are naturally gifted at. So um, if they, for example, are learning an instrument, they will really take that practice very seriously, put in a lot of work so that they can be happy with their achievements. Again, they will not take anything for granted. They will really be very eager to put their effort, their own hard work, in the pursuit of um, growth and expansion in their lives. They are very ambitious and they are very proud of their accomplishments here with the world. All of their victories, I sense, will be very hard earned. And this is a person who um, can likely become very, very successful at whatever um, they decide to do, whatever road that they decide to pursue. And I can see here with Journey that um, as they get older, they may feel inclined to um, pursue a unique path in life. Um, a path that is perhaps not that easy. They may encounter a lot of challenges, but they are driven by their ambition. They are very uh, perseverant and um, 
they know what they're after, they know how to chase after their goals, their dreams. So they're not afraid of any journey, um, even though it appears to be a difficult one. Um, they may be the kind of person who, in pursuit of their passion, will take a lot of risks and, for example, start their own business. They may want to travel or live abroad because um, they have a sense of calling in that direction. And whatever path they decide to take in life, um, I can see them achieving so, so much and other people looking up to them. With this, car car with this card, the Merlin, guidance, mentorship, being a teacher, other people will be uh, looking up to your child, trying to get um, nuggets of wisdom, um, asking them to share their life experiences, um, asking for support in matters of the career, or perhaps everyday matters. I can see your child uh, becoming very, very wise as they get older, and also um, achieving some form of mastery of their enterprise, whatever they are doing. With the instruments here, um, they may become a very talented musician, or perhaps uh, they will be some kind of advisor to people, like a counselor, a therapist, perhaps even a lawyer, or of course a teacher, as it's written on the card. With the card, the spider and the passion flower, I sense that everything they will do, they are likely to bring a dose of uniqueness. The words here are creative ingenuity. Whatever they do in their life, um, they will take a different approach. They are likely to think outside of the box, um, try to look at any problems from a different perspective. It's something unexpected. They are a very, very creative person. They could very well show that uh, right from their childhood, but actually never lose it as they get older. Um, they will not allow themselves to be fenced in by thoughts and uh, beliefs that society dictates. They will really um, follow their own dream and their own path in life. And I sense that um, they might have a hint of what that is already since they're very young. I see them really loving the outdoors. Um, really enjoying going out on walks, um, going hiking, going camping, spending time at the beach or even in the mountains if it's something that you will enjoy doing as a family. They will have um, quite a sharp mind and always trying to um, use logic whenever dealing with a particular situation. And I think that it is also through their logic that um, they will learn to process and deal with all of their emotions, especially the negative ones, um, when they are holding them back. Again, as it says here, they are uh, very serious when it comes to the things that matter. They are not joking around, they are not doing anything half-heartedly. They have a strong um, work ethic and a lot of drive. As a child, they will likely be very sweet, very affectionate, always coming to you um, for comfort and always entrusting you with their secrets because otherwise um, they will be quite a private, private person, quite unlikely to share their deepest thoughts with just about anyone. They like the color white and as we see here possibly silver. This may be a color that they are drawn to, they may very much enjoy winter. They may have a very bright white aura. This is something that I'm seeing right now, just radiating with the energy of the universe. There's a lot of purity to that image. As a night owl, you um, might find them staying up late into the night and maybe into the early hours of the morning, especially as they get older, um, especially into their teenage years um, when they have more of a say in uh, um, what the bedtime hours might be. I see them um, very likely to um, read a lot of books and study at night and that's the time when they actually really come to life and get a lot of energy. So this is what I have for you in terms of um, personality traits. I already mentioned the zodiac signs, so we have here possibly Gemini, Cancer, 
Capricorn or Aquarius. I think I pretty much covered everything. So now the last thing that I'm gonna do is grab the pendulum. This is actually one of my favorite rings that I used to wear quite a lot at some point in time. It is made of silver and um, it is an old wife's tale uh, that if you hang a pendulum over a pregnant woman's belly, um, if it swings from side to side, it is a boy, and if it spins in circles, then it is a girl. So let's swing our pendulum right now and see which one it is most likely to be. Again, nothing is set in stone. It is actually very hard to try to sway the gender of your baby, but there are ways to do that. So if you're ever curious, um, look that up online. You may get to have a little influence in what your future baby's sex will be. So let's find out, boy or girl? So I think we have pretty definite circles over here. So I would say that we have a girl. Congratulations. So, group one, this is all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed your reading. If you did, please like, share and subscribe for more videos. I would love to see you again here soon. But for now, I hope you're having a good day or a good night wherever you are. Take good care and I will see you next time. Bye. Hello, group two, and welcome to your reading. So today we will be trying to learn everything that we can about your future child. We will be looking at personality traits, zodiac sign. We will be looking at how they interact with others, what kind of likes, hobbies, sports they are into, what kind of path in life they are most likely to take, how the two of you might interact, and also, at the end, for those of you who are interested, we will try to have a little peek at the sex of your child. I know that's uh, something uh, some of you might be curious about. So today you chose this beautiful card, representing the Lepidolite crystal. It's got a beautiful unicorn right here in the middle with the message, breathe in your trueness. And you also chose the blue candle, which we're gonna light up right now. Let's place your candle right here and first we will talk about the car that's already on the table. Breathe in your tunis and the image that I'm getting is that your child will be very unique. There will be something about them that stands out. They will be a mystical unicorn of sorts. Maybe they will also be attracted to this animal. Should I say this? Um, mystical animal. Maybe they will like uh, stories of uh, princesses and unicorns and magical things like fairies, wizards, witches. So they may be very much into fantasy. But with the message, breathe in your trueness, I really do sense that um, your child will be a very effective communicator. They will be always uh, brave enough to speak their mind. They will express their feelings, their emotions um, clearly. They will very much embrace their uniqueness and um, not uh, shy away from showing that to the world. There is really something very special about them. So I'm really curious to see what that might be. So let's get some oracle cards. Let's get some tarot. We'll get all the information on the table first and then I will talk you through everything. Let's go. I have a few bags prepared here for you. So let's see what kind of cards come out. What kind of cards want to come out? All right, we have Winter Solstice with Reflection. And uh, you can see again that we have this beautiful blue color. And the color blue corresponds to the throat chakra. So that might be um, something you are drawn to. But it may be, again, 
um, reflecting on your child's um, ease with interactions. They are not afraid to speak their mind. Um, they are very good at communicating, very good at socializing. Let's see what card came out. We have the squirrel and chestnut with preparation. All right. Let's get some cards from this deck. This is actually a tarot deck, but it is quite um, different from the usual cards in a Rider Waite style tarot. And the explanations can differ, and it's, it is always very uh, beautiful to interpret the message intuitively. So we have card number one with the world. We also have card number two with initiation, and it's interesting that they came out together because um, the deck was very well shuffled, and I always double check um, that there are no connected cards. So uh, this uh, speaks of a progression. This speaks of a growth. Um, succeeding numbers, okay? We also have number 20, Priestess, and then we also have Goddess of Water. Alright. And we'll get some Oracle cards from here. wants to come out. It's um, the secret path. An irresistible pull down a distinct path, ley lines, mystical traditions. Let's see what this is. Far, far away, creative daydreaming. All right. And what else? Yes, I will get the tarot. What else is there to know about group two's child? We have the Queen of Air, which is the Queen of Swords, and then we also have the Two of Swords. Okay. Um, let's get some months of the year to see um, around what time of the year they might be um, born at. That will also give us an indication of possible uh, star sign, zodiac. Um, so far we have um, air signs on the table, so uh, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So let's see, what month of the year or months of the year? We have March. Okay, so that is um, Pisces or Aries. And this one, we have also August, so that is Leo and that is also Virgo. Okay, so we do have quite a few possibilities and over here I have a little bag with a lot of um, traits, attributes, um, likes, interests. Uh, we also have some zodiac signs here. We also have some um, physical traits and let's see what we get. Alright, quite a few wanted to come out. Um, so, we have Libra, we have Joker, also practical, we have Short Tempered, that also came out in Group 1, um, Ice Skating as a sport, Alright, we have Flute, so someone might be interested in playing the flute. Um, we have logical, tinkering, so your child might like to tinker, they might like to uh, take things apart or build things. Adventure, they will be interested in adventure. Um, polite, so that's really lovely to have in a child. Um, fiery, okay. Interesting, uh, there are some similarities here with group one. We have painting, so your child might be interested in painting, they might be very good at painting. Again, we have Virgo, so that confirms the August time frame. We have 
couch potato. Uh, someone might be uh, a bit more comfortable um, at home, relaxing. Uh, we have modest. We've got a lot of traits. And also, baseball might be another sport that they may be interested in. All right. So these are all of our cards and let's start to interpret the messages here. So first of all, what I want to um, address is these two cards. Number one with the world and number two with initiation. So what I'm seeing here, uh, have a look yourself at um, this person walking away from a burning citadel or, or, or village or castle. Um, they are going on their own journey. They are leaving behind um, something that um, perhaps was part of their identity. And with initiation, it is, in a sense, um, um, coming back to source and uh, evaluating your own path and uh, really connecting with your soul and with your own higher self trying to uh, find your own path. So what I'm seeing here um, is uh, not necessarily um, a personality trait per se. It's not uh, necessarily something that is part of your child's identity, but um, either in your family um, or your partner's family, so the other parent of the child, um, there may be some kind of generational trauma, some kind of baggage that um, has been um, carried on from generation to generation, um, some kind of um, toxic or destructive pattern, um, perhaps there has been uh, some sort of hurt there, um, perhaps um, a trauma came in the form of abuse of any sort or um, some form of dysfunctional situation, so um, either involvement involving family dynamics or finances or anything of that nature. All right, so um, this is a baggage that uh, child absolutely um, comes into the world with. It is um, written in their genes. Genes are uh, very much altered by the environment, so. Um, every kind of uh, pain and hurt that uh, the, the parents, the grandparents felt will be passed on um, to the essence of a child. So what I'm seeing here is that your child, um, by embracing their uniqueness, um, by embracing their own true calling and their own true nature, is uh, destined to be the person who breaks this generational trauma, uh, breaks the chain of, of dysfunction, of heartbreak, um, any kind of hurt that has been uh, passed on in the family from, for generation and generation, and they embark on their own journey of self-discovery, of initiation, and this is really actually giving me goosebumps right now, because uh, this is a, a very special child who um, has chosen to come into this world with a very specific purpose. I can um, see them being very touched with themselves, um, having a lot of moment of reflection, of introspection, um, I can see that um, they will be the kind of person who won't mind uh, being alone. Actually, they will enjoy it. So when they are small, you may be very surprised that um, they are very nicely just playing with their toys quietly, um, not really bothering anyone. And they can be um, in their room for hours creating their own little fantasy world. And you might very much um, enjoy watching the kind of games that uh, they create within that world. And it will really give you a window um, into, into their minds and their souls. With Goddess of Water here, um, I can sense that um, your child is a very caring and a very loving person. And uh, just as much as uh, they um, offer love to the world, to those closest 
to them, um, they will also be uh, very much loved and nurtured by you and the family. Um, they will be very protective. You will feel very protective of them. There's something uh, delicate and sensitive about their nature here with the octopus. Um, octopi are very uh, sensitive creatures. They are very intelligent and um, very much in tune with their environment. So um, I can see you wanting to, to nurture them and uh, shield them um, from the world. Uh, sometimes uh, th that might uh, trigger perhaps some overprotective tendencies in you. It is good to be aware of that. Because as much as we want our children to be safe, we also want to give them the freedom to explore it, the world on their own and really find their own true self. And the, the truth is that your child does have their own path laid down in life. Something really special. Something that uh, not that many other people can do. It takes a very unique person to um, walk this path, to make these choices. Maybe um, they will be a very intuitive person. Maybe um, they will be uh, very connected to their own spirituality. So. Um, they could either embark on a spiritual journey of their own or help others on that kind of path. I see your child um, as an adult, uh, perhaps uh, visiting the monasteries of Tibet, um, meditating with the monks there, um, trying to get a deeper perspective on the world, on what is beyond the physical 3D reality? Because here with priestess, with priestess, um, it is something that they connect to instinctively, intuitively. You may find that um, they are very much in tune with the cycles of the moon. So uh, they may be quite restless around the full moon. You may see that um, as children, they don't sleep quite as well and they may have uh, very vivid dreams or even nightmares and uh, their energy might fluctuate so as the um, moon grows uh, so th does their energy and as the moon wanes then um, they will be more still and uh, they would rather uh, stay inside and um, have more gentle activities so not be quite as active as normal and uh, that is in their nature. With creative daydreaming, it actually does tie in with what I was telling you earlier about them um, playing on their own, um, creating a whole fantasy world, a world of um, make-believe. Uh, they might be the kind of child who has an imaginary friend, someone they always talk to, um, they might uh, mention their friend to you or um, save them a seat next to them at the dining table. And I see them very much engulfed in uh, this kind of fantasy world. Um, as they get a bit older, they might enjoy um, reading uh, fantasy books, fantasy novels, or watching movies of that nature, or uh, playing that sort of games. But um, they in themselves are very creative, so they might be the kind of person who gets into writing. So um, writing uh, may become a career path for them, especially if it's in the fantasy genre. It may also be a different kind of art, uh, such as paint painting, of course, since it uh, came out right here. So they might express themselves through the visual arts. But it's it's always about this uh, beautiful and rich um, fantasy world that is um, a little bit beyond our day-to-day -day reality. I can see them um, sometimes being a little bit hesitant about um, certain decisions that they need to make, if it's important decisions, um, like um, what career path to go on, what kind of field of study uh, they should pursue. There is an element of indecision, of hesitation. Um, it may be that for some they might postpone making a decision like that. Um, they might take a year off where they travel, they meet people, 
um, trying to get in touch with themselves, uh, perhaps, uh, again, uh, going to a spiritual place to um, really kind of find themselves and um, find their own true um, life purpose. I sense that um, when they are feeling stressed, they can get a little bit avoidant. So it may be that, um, uh, for example, when they're in school, um, if they have a lot going on, um, a lot of homework, a lot of uh, studying to do, um, they might just uh, shut the world off and uh, escape to um, their own quiet place where their imagination can roam free. It is a, a bit like a form of escapism through fantasy. Uh, this is how they cope with stress. But I see them as they mature a little bit, um, as they get into their teen years and uh, their 20s, um, they will really uh, find a sort of confidence here with the Queen of Air um, that uh, perhaps they have always had within them but uh, never really got the chance to express fully. So as they become an adult and as they take their own place in the world, um, this um, side of them might come out where they really make um, everyone laugh. They are quite a witty person, um, very bright. Someone who always has the right thing to say in whichever circumstance. So people might really uh, admire them for that and they may get a lot of friends through that kind of trait. I see here with the squirrel and the chestnut preparation um, that um, they will likely not be a big spender. Um, they will value their savings and they might learn how to save money um, from a very young age. So they would have their own uh, piggy bank. Um, they would do uh, house chores for money and then save all of that money and maybe just invest it into um, some kind of more meaningful object. And that will carry on into their adult years. So they will be uh, very good at saving and very cautious about spending. This is something that I see very much here. And also with practical, they will really be very much aware of any practical matters and um, I can see them uh, putting together uh, different spreadsheets to um, check on their spendings and um, they will really try to um, always find a good deal whenever that's possible and really just be um, very cautious with their finances. They are not a loud person by any measure here with polite and modest. Um, they are actually quite reserved. Um, but they will always um, speak out when it's needed and when it's appropriate and they will always find the right things to say. Um, your child is not a shy person, uh, but uh, they are very aware of how they express themselves because they always want to put their best foot forward. They want to be appreciated. They may have a sense of adventure. Uh, they might want to um, see what's out there, what the world has to offer beyond the place that they were born in, they, that they grew up in. Again, with Joker, I can see them um, growing into uh, quite a witty person and um, having uh, always a good sense of humor, um, knowing some really good jokes and uh, delivering them in a great way really entertaining those around them. I can see them sometimes getting um, a bit angry and frustrated, especially when they are misunderstood, especially since um, they are uh, making such big efforts to make a good impression and to be appreciated. So um, whenever someone uh, seems to just not get them, um, they, they may uh, come off as a little bit short-tempered and they really don't have any patience um, with people who are not really um, on their level, um, with people who are confrontational and uh, those who just don't understand. So now that I have covered everything laid down here in the cards, let's just ask one more question for those who are interested, for those who find it relevant, um, what would be the sex of your child? And this is uh, an old wives uh, method 
of determining the gender of a baby and uh, uh, they would have a pendulum um, this is a ring hanging on a chain and um, they would hold it over a mom's pregnant belly and um, if the if the chain would uh, swing back and forth that would mean it's a boy and if the chain would go in circles that would mean it's a girl so now let's ask here for group two is it a boy or is it a girl We're starting to go a little bit back and forth. Mm. Yeah, I think this is pretty definite that um, it is a girl. Definitely circles, definitely a girl for you, group two. So congratulations. Your child really seems to be quite an inspiring person. Uh, it's been really lovely to do this reading for you. Um, again, if you were drawn to more than one group, then uh, go ahead and check out the other groups that caught your eye. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it was beneficial. But this is where I leave you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed. I post pick a card readings every week. But this is where I leave you and wishing you a good day or a good night wherever you are. Take good care and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hello group 3 and welcome to your reading. So today we will be finding out all about your future child. How are they like? Um, what are their personality traits? Their zodiac sign? What kind of interests and hobbies they might have? How they would interact with the people around them and also you? And right at the end we will try to have a little sneak peek at the sex of the child for those of you who are interested. But first of all, let's light up your candle. Okay. Lovely. Let's put it right here. And the card that you chose represents the ruby. All right. And it says you only more so. There's a spider right here in the center. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of spider it is. Um, first I thought maybe uh, it's a black widow, but to be fair I have really no idea, but since you chose this group and you like uh, perhaps the image of the spider, you may know a little bit more about spiders than me, so uh, maybe you let me know in the comment section below. But I really love the contrast of um, light and dark, light and shadow on the card, and especially um, the words you only more so. And you know what this uh, makes me think about? Um, I really do think that your child will embody a lot of the traits, a lot of the personality traits that um, you also possess. And um, perhaps they will even look a lot like you. This is really what I'm getting. But you only more so. I feel that um, um, there was any part of yourself that um, you pushed back growing up, if um, there was any time where you felt like you couldn't show the world uh, your true self, your true colors, something about yourself um, that you couldn't express, um, your child will actually have no problem doing so. So anything that you have kept in the shadow, perhaps, uh, for example, um, you were not allowed to be assertive growing up. So that trait was discouraged. You will find that um, your child is truly um, very assertive. They really hold their boundaries. Um, they really express their needs and their wants. That's just an example. It can really be anything, any kind of trait, any kind of attitude. So. I, I really do think that um, you will um, recognize so many parts of yourself within your child and I feel that they will, will be very uh, courageous about embracing their shadow side, which is by the way not our dark side, but uh, it is all of those um, traits that uh, sometimes society says uh, maybe are less 
acceptable, but uh, they are just as valuable. I will give you another example. Um, perhaps uh, someone really values their independence, but society often tells us that um, we are supposed to to have a partner, we are supposed to um, form um, couples and live that way. But, uh, uh, you know, perhaps for, for someone it is not what they believe in. It is uh, not how they feel they should leave, live their life. So what I'm getting is that um, your child will really uh, like to live um, in an authentic manner. They will really be true to themselves and to their own emotions and to their own life path. But um, with that being said, let's get some cards for you. I will lay them all out on the table. I will get Oracle cards as well as Tarot. Um, you'll find out a little bit about their personality traits and um, also we will try to have a glimpse at their birth month, so possible um, star sign. So let's see what we have here already. We have ocean, ebb and flow, and we also have whale with breach. And um, I really love the water symbolism. I feel that uh, your child may be very drawn to the water, to the ocean. It, it might be a place where they really feel very comfortable, very at, much at ease. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let's get all of your cards on the table. Alright, these two want to come out. So we have the turtle and coriander with satisfaction and we also have the butterfly and snowdrop with hope. Okay, um, let's get a couple of these. This is a tarot deck but um, the images and the symbols are a bit different than in the traditional writer way tarot. So, um, I would like to interpret them intuitively. So these two are the nice. Let's see what they are. We have uh, card number zero, Pilgrim. And then we also have 11, Balance. All right. Um, what else? Let's get a couple of these. What else here for group three's child? Group three and their child. This one wants to come out. It's story keeper. Interesting. Um, tell your story, legacy, write your wisdom. Beautiful. What else? What else here for group three and their child? We have beauty and the beast with unconditional love. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, there is next. What else for group three? What else about their child? This card wants to come out. It's the seven of pentacles. All right. Investment, assessment, and patience. Oh, that one really jumped out. <laughs> okay, it's on the floor. Let's have a look at what it is. Oh. Yes, it's the nine of swords with negativity, worry, and sleeplessness. Um, let's have a look at possible bread months for star signs, zodiac signs. We have February, so that's either Aquarius or Pisces. Um, one more. And December, so that's either Sagittarius or Capricorn. Um, what else? I have a little bag full of traits, personality traits, uh, they can be hobbies, they can be um, favorite colors, even some appearance traits of so, um, how they look. Let's see what it is. What do we get here? All right, so we have, <laughs> we have here Joker, so some of these overlap with some of the other groups. I don't have any doubles in that bag, I promise, but uh, for some reason we got this again. Um, Joker, we have Intuitive, we have Genius, so you're going to have a very, very smart child. Uh, we have 
skateboarding, I don't know, it may be that in the future skateboarding will once again become very popular because we have here two groups with <laughs> skateboarding. Uh, short tempers, so so far all of the children have been short tempered. <laughs> Um, I, I think it is actually something quite common, at least to the um, toddler years, so um, they will be normal children getting normal tantrums, don't worry. Um, we have here Scorpio, so another possible star sign. We have green eyes, okay. We have, again, white, so this doesn't refer to skin tone, this refers to um, a favorite color. So <laughs> this, again, was uh, something that group one got. And then we also have guarded. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the cards here. Again, with ocean and whale, I really do feel that um, your child will uh, be very much in love with the sea, with the ocean, uh, beaches. They might enjoy any kind of activity that happens um, near the sea or onto the sea. So it can be surfing, it can be um, swimming, it can be boating, scuba diving. So mm, anything that happens near the water, on the water. They may very well take this kind of path in life where um, they study the ocean and sea life or um, maybe even have um, some kind of job in the, um, that relates to the um, conservation of the uh, natural environments and um, cleaning the world's oceans. So they may be an environmentalist. But what I'm seeing with a whale is that they may have a very... Uh, big personality, they may grow up to be quite opinionated and quite loud at times, but at the same time they will be a very gentle person and they would only reveal themselves to um, the people who they care about the most. So um, they won't be the kind of person who wears their heart up their sleeve, they will really be quite um, guarded and cautious to um, about uh, what they share, who they shared with, they would be quite guarded in that regard. And the reason is they are uh, an intuitive person, perhaps even a water sign. We have here Scorpio on the table. We also have possibly um, Pisces here with February. So I, I think they would really have um, a very clear feel of um, other people's intentions and who means well and who they should rather keep away from. I can see here with the turtle and coriander satisfaction um, that um, seeing, seeing them grow and develop will bring you a lot of satisfaction. Um, you'll get a lot of happiness in seeing how effortlessly they express their uniqueness and how true they are really to their own self. And with the turtle, I really do feel that they will have a very long life but perhaps one that is um, lived slowly, without much turbulence. Um, and this is also reflected with the seven of earth, seven of earth, investment, assessment, patience. So I can see them um, being very patient, um, taking their time um, with any kind of endeavor um, that they embark on, uh, seeing the bigger picture and um, really following all of the logical steps to achieving their goals. They are not the kind of person to rush in, quite the contrary. They are very good at planning and through their sharp intellect they really can assess all of the different paths available to them and um, they are very much able to um, make a wise and informed decision about um, which road to take. Now, what I'm seeing over here with the nine of air, negativity, worry and sleeplessness, I sense that at some point, possibly in their teenage years or even their adult life, um, they will go through a particular challenge. It may have something to do with the realm of romance because right here next to this card we have Beauty and the Beast with unconditional love. 
So um, they may find themselves um, in a situation where uh, the universe pushes them to learn this lesson of unconditional love, um, loving someone in spite of a difficult circumstance perhaps, um, in spite of um, what they've done to them or how they may have hurt them willingly or not. But I see um, that on their destiny path, they do have this lesson laid out for them, the lesson of unconditional love. And what I feel over here is that they will master it. They will absolutely uh, nail this lesson with Story Keeper, tell your story legacy, write your wisdom. There will be a lot of wisdom um, to be gained from this experience that will prove um, stressful and destabilizing for a while. But afterwards, uh, when all of the emotions have set, after um, they have passed their test, so to speak, there will be so much wisdom derived from it. And it is going to be a story to be um, passed down to their children. It will be a story that um, may very well inspire others. So um, they may even go around um, as a motivational speaker sharing their experience with other people in order to improve their lives. I also see that um, your child, especially while, while little, will be um, very much in touch with nature. They will very much enjoy uh, being out there, perhaps in the forest and again near the ocean. Um, they will be very curious about animals and uh, really uh, loving all animals. They will feel very much at ease um, walking barefoot in the grass and, um, and getting their hands and feet and face dirty. They um, very well may enjoy gardening, just uh, spending time outdoors with you. I see the two of you um, connecting very much through that, enjoying outdoor activities together. And just being outside in nature um, brings them a sense of balance. And I have a feeling that it is the same for you. That there is something very soothing and very balancing about being in the great outdoors. Now with the butterfly and snowdrop with hope, again, it really ties into um, their painful lesson that they will have to learn. And uh, the butterfly is a symbol of transformation. So uh, they will emerge on the other side, wiser and more beautiful, uh, like a brand new person with so much hope for life and so much love for life. Over here with um, Pilgrim, I do feel that it will inspire them to uh, go out there and explore the world, um, really um, get to know everything there is about the world, um, expand their own horizon and, and get to meet people who may be completely different from them learning from all of those experiences, uh, taking them in with an open mind, with an open heart. Again, I, I, I do get this feeling that um, your child may very well become a motivational speaker, a writer, perhaps a journalist, um, a reporter, um, someone who um, goes around the world, uh, they interact with uh, many different people from many different walks of life. and. Uh, uh, they connect with an open mind and every person they meet expands their um, perspective and enriches their life and their worldview. And I do think this is really beautiful. As I mentioned before, um, I was telling you that um, as a child, they uh, very well may be uh, prone to tantrums, having outbursts of emotion. Uh, but I also do see them actually um, being a very early talker and really showing their intelligence very, very early in life. You might find that um, they learn how to read without any kind of instruction. Uh, they might excel at, at something like math or science. 
and it is all gonna feel very effortless for them and you might may find that um, school um, can get a bit boring for them so um, if they are not enrolled in a school for um, very gifted children uh, you may find that um, regular school just feels uh, very boring for them and actually most of the knowledge that uh, they will gather um, throughout the, their younger years but also in their life um, will be from other sources just uh, feeding into their own uh, likes and their own interests they will be a very good uh, storyteller uh, always very engaging to the people listening and um, they will always and they will also have a very good sense of humor so not always um, taking themselves very seriously okay so um, this is all I have about your child so now all that is left to do is um, ask about uh, the sex of the child for those of you who are interested uh, this is uh, an old wife's method of de determining gender um, Basically, what you would do is uh, hold a pendulum, or in this case, we have a ring on a chain over a pregnant person's belly. And if the pendulum swings back and forth like this, um, it is a boy. And if it spins like this in circles, then it's a girl. So let's see for group three over here. What do we have? Do we have a boy or do we have a girl? Alright, group three, so I think this is a quite a definite back and forth, so congratulations, it's a boy. So this is where I leave you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, share and subscribe for more. I post pick a card readings every week. So I do think that you will enjoy your time here. I am wishing you a good day or a good night, wherever you are. Take good care and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hello Group 4, welcome to your reading. So this will be all about your future child. We will be looking at personality traits, we will be looking at um, likes and wants, what kind of dreams for the future they may have, um, what kind of relationship the two of you will have. We'll also um, try to get a clue of their zodiac sign. And also at the end, for those of you who are interested, we will swing a pendulum and see whether they may be a boy or a girl. So, with that being said, let me first light up your candle. You chose this beautiful indigo candle. All right, there it is. And of course, you also chose this card. Find your way home. Let's have a closer look at it. So, what I'm thinking about when looking at this card is how even though your child um, uh, may go to uh, different places, have uh, their own unique life experiences, some of them uh, may take them far away from home, far away from uh, the places, uh, the people they grew up with, um, they will always uh, feel that calling to come back. They will um, always, throughout their life, um, stay very close to the family, as in um, their parents, um, grandparents, siblings. They will really very much cherish all of those meaningful connections and they will be uh, the kind of adult who will often call you to tell you about their lives and come to visit you when you're old and grey, so that's really lovely to see. So. Let's get some cards now. I will get both oracle cards and tarot. I will lay them all out on the table and see what they have to tell us about your child. So for group four, for group four and their child, we have cave with sanctuary. And also desert with vision quest. I don't always draw an even number of cards for each of the groups. Um, it's just my intuition, it's just 
you know, it really depends on how I feel and also how many um, cards the deck is willing to give me. Uh, but that doesn't mean that um, one person's reading uh, might be lacking or might be richer compared to another's. Um, I always try to get into as much detail as possible with each and every group. Uh, you also have the otter and cattail with peace. And we have the goat and willow with overcoming obstacles. Right. Um, let's get some cards from here. This is a tarot deck, but a little bit different than um, the usual tarot decks that um, are based on the rider weight. And um, I interpret these cards intuitively. You will see, um, even though the suits may sound similar, uh, the meanings can be quite different. So we have Seven of Fire, which is the Seven of Wands. And we also have a uh, 17 Wisdom Keeper. All right. Now for some parrot. Let's see. We have the Page of Air, which is the Page of Swords, truthful, analytical, outspoken, and also the Knight of Air, Knight of Swords, intellectual, determined, and motivated. All right. Um, let's place them over here. Um, I have one more deck that I want to draw from. Here we have Solace, Return to Nature, Tree Wisdom, Natural Remedies, Flower Essences. Okay. And we also have Gatekeeper. Fairy time, time shifts, dimensional slips, very interesting. Um, let's get some months of the year um, for a little hint at um, possible zodiac signs. So we have the month of May, which is either Taurus or Gemini. And one more option. There's a lot of people watching this video, so obviously uh, not all of the children will be born in the same month or under the same sign. Okay, we got three. Uh, so let's have a look at them. We have November. So um, that is either Scorpio or Sagittarius. And we also have October, which is Libra and Scorpio. Um, I also have a little bag of attributes, traits, um, likes, um, hobbies. We also have some physical traits mixed up in here. Um, I also have a few zodiac, well, I have all of the zodiac signs, but um, really there's so many different uh, slips of paper over here that uh, you may or may not get those. So let's see, we have a bit of a mix here and quite a lot. Okay, so first of all, we have Gemini, so it goes with the month of May over here. Um, photography, your child may be interested in photography, perhaps uh, ever since they are very little. They would like to uh, take photos with your phone, um, take photos of their family adventure. So they may have an adventure streak. Also, bookworm, they will enjoy reading books. Smooth talker. I really feel that uh, this is by definition a Gemini trait. Um, and I think um, you may find that uh, they have an easy time getting themselves out of trouble. Perhaps uh, coming up with the most ingenious kind of explanations for the things that they've done. We also have Libra, okay? So Libra over here with the month of October is just a confirmation. Um, piano, so uh, they may want to learn the piano, take piano lessons. Sales, so ever since uh, they are small, they may be interested in selling things to other people, um, perhaps uh, it could be as simple as uh, having a lemonade stand or they may um, kind of start a small business uh, around their uh, class at school, um, buying small items in bulk and uh, selling them to their classmates. That would be interesting. So definitely an interest in business over here. Uh, we have idealistic, so someone who really wants to uh, change the world for the better. We have 
also tech savvy so you may find that they really um, start to understand how technology works from a very young age they might want their own uh, tablet for phone or computer um, babysitting all right so they may want to uh, babysit their younger siblings or um, as they uh, mature into their teenage years uh, they may get get babysitting jobs and make some money off of that and I really um, get the sense that uh, uh, they are very finance oriented um, in particular in your group so I think uh, your, your child um, will be very ingenious in uh, coming up with um, ways to uh, make some pocket money and also into adulthood they will um, very much uh, put a great price on uh, their finances and uh, aiming for a really good job we have social media so they may be interested in social media they may want to become social media influencers um, reading so again it goes with bookworm they really love to read ambivert so uh, this is a person who is uh, neither an introvert an introvert or an extrovert or should I say uh, they have a little bit of both kind of traits so uh, they may be very outgoing and outspoken in certain situations and uh, sometimes they just want to retreat and keep to themselves so perhaps um, read or plan their next adventure we have shy okay so there's a hint of shyness that's um, probably why they feel comfortable in only some situations not all of them we have brown eyes so your child may very well have brown eyes um, Sagittarius okay so that goes with a uh, end of November kind of uh, timeline uh, baking so they may be into baking they may want to, you to uh, bake cookies or cakes together and that would be a very fun family activity and then we also have colorful hair so uh, they may ask um, to dye their hair a bright color they may be very much into that and uh, perhaps wanted um, ever since they're very little okay so these are all your cards over here and uh, let's start talking about them what I see over here with a desert vision quest and also with a idealistic uh, note is that um, they really have a very clear vision of how the world should work um, your child will have a vision of um, perhaps uh, the direction in which uh, humanity uh, needs to progress they may have a very very strong desire to change the world for the better and uh, they will always express uh, when they sense uh, some kind of injustice so uh, they will always try to express um, how things should work in fact they may oftentimes uh, uh, feel very sad for uh, people who are struggling financially for the homeless they uh, may feel very sad for animals who um, get abandoned the destruction of the environment uh, would be something that um, gets them very angered so uh, they have a vision of a bright future with everyone uh, living in harmony and looking after um, the environment and uh, looking out for each other helping each other um, I feel that um, as they get older they might be interested in volunteering for um, certain causes um, they may be interested in starting a non-profit or being part of a non-profit um, which helps to improve the world in some kind of meaningful way with a seven of fire here um, I see them being very determined and um, very willing to fight for what they feel is right they have a lot of inner strength and they also have a lot of charisma and um, they are eager to use that um, for the improvement and for the uh, common good of the people living in the world with a page of swords here the page of air um, I sense that um, they will always be very honest and really speak their mind um, even in situations where it may not be to their advantage but they are the kind of person who uh, sees the truth and speaks the truth and perhaps um, sometimes they that uh, may rub some people the wrong way uh, people may feel offended when they are being uh, pointed out their flaws their issues but 
I see your child um, being a fighter for the common good. So they are the kind of person who um, will give some tough love to the people who need it. But um, it always comes from a pure place. It um, doesn't have any kind of meanness attached to it. It um, really comes from uh, the desire for other people's growth and for other people to uh, see things clearly. Y you might expect them to always uh, give um, very honest feedback. They are not the kind of person to uh, sugarcoat at all. They do have the gift of talking. We see here with Smooth Talker. So, um, even though they may come off as a little bit shy uh, when they're little, I sense this is something that will happen only when they are very, very little. Um, with time, they will really um, grow into their own character. and Their throat chakra will really very much open up and they will always speak the truth with uh, great determination, with great conviction. And uh, this is a, a trait, a quality that will really ser serve them, um, for example, in sales. So I can sense that they are really interested in that and they will be the kind of person that um, can really sell you um, anything just uh, through their words, the way they present the product. They will really uh, be able to uh, talk anyone into buying anything, no matter what. Uh, just uh, through the way that they talk. And again, this uh, may be a very uh, successful trait, uh, especially if they're interested in social media. So if they have to sell things on social media, they will always find the right words to do so. And um, you may find uh, that they have an interest in getting involved in that um, right from their teenage years. This is uh, something that um, they may become very popular through just because of this uh, gift of smooth talking. But it is always based in reality. It is always based in truth. They always uh, speak facts. So um, you can trust them to not lie, but uh, uh, they can always present an idea, a concept in a very attractive light. So they can be very successful at pitching anything. Right here on the other side we have the Knight of Swords. So there is a progression from a page to a knight. I think um, their qualities will only improve like a fine wine as they get older. They may find that uh, they have a great ease in performing um, any activities that require their intellect. Regardless of the fact uh, of whether they showed any um, particular gift as children, so they may be uh, bright children, they may be average children, but as they get older, their intellect really starts to shine. They can really uh, learn how to do things that to others appear uh, very difficult. And uh, part of the reason for that is their great determination. They are uh, really set to succeed. They are not afraid of hard work. And there's this uh, persistence to them. A lot of persistence, pushing through any kind of challenge that life throws at them. And we also see here with a goat and willow overcoming obstacles. Everyone gets obstacles in life. Everyone gets difficult times. But your child will be very, very persistent. They will not let any kind of obstacle, any kind of challenge to slow them down. They will keep on pushing and pushing with this wonderful determination, strength and uh, Part of this is also due to their clear vision of what they want to achieve and also of how they want the world to be a better place. I see here with the card Solace and also Cave, Sanctuary and the Otter and Cattail with Peace that they will discover and perhaps um, in some of their uh, more stressful times when uh, they feel overworked and uh, perhaps overburdened, that they find great peace in nature. They will discover how um, healing and beneficial it is to go hiking in the forest, to take a forest bath, so to speak, and um, they may become very interested in natural remedies, using herbal supplements, herbal treatments, 
making their own uh, teas and infusions and uh, really uh, picking their own herbs, their own plants, mushrooms, berries, knowing the healing properties of each and every plant. This is something uh, they may become very curious about and uh, really want to learn everything about um, herbalism and natural remedies. And being out in nature will really uh, provide them a sense of peace in what can be sometimes of a turbulent world. It is uh, uh, the place where they find themselves, the place where they go to um, recalibrate find their own center and reconnect uh, with their mission because I really sense a great um, feeling of mission for your child over here. Again, I sense that they will uh, throughout the, their life have a great passion for learning. So we got this twice with reading and bookworm. Um, when they're small, they may be very interested in books and prefer uh, reading books over playing with toys. Um, they may want to uh, get a lot of books, many colorful books. They will want to be read bedtime stories and uh, show a great interest in learning how to read themselves uh, before they even learn it in school so that they can um, go through the books without your help at any time they want. And um, you may find that uh, when they're in school Instead of uh, maybe going to hang out with their friends after school, um, they would rather go to the library and explore some of the books there and take uh, bags full of books back home. And you may even have a hard time convincing them to go to bed because they may be um, under their bed covers um, with a lamp on and you know reading the next great book. I'm really getting the feeling that um, they will take their whole life as an adventure. Um, they will open, they will be open up to experiences with a great sense of excitement and curiosity. I am really, really um, getting the Sagittarius vibes uh, from your group very, very much. So I'm happy uh, this came out, and we also got uh, the confirmation with the month of November. We, um, I'm also getting the Gemini vibes. Um, being a very good communicator. And I see something very interesting here with these two cards. Uh, uh, can you tell? This is so curious how they came out together from different decks. We have uh, over here Wisdom Keeper and here we have Gatekeeper, okay? So, what I'm seeing here is that um, at one point in your child's life, they will have a faded meeting with an older person, a very spiritual person, um, perhaps some form of guru, someone who is enlightened on the spiritual path. This meeting will be no accident, I sense, um, and it will have a very great impact on your child. Up until that point, um, they may feel like um, they're fumbling about in the dark. Having some kind of idea of what they want to do, the kind of things they want to accomplish, but um, their path is not fully illuminated. Um, it's as if they are holding one tiny candle in a pitch black forest. They can't really see more than a few steps ahead of them. So after this encounter, and I'm sensing that um, this older, wiser person uh, will become kind of like a teacher to your child. So after this encounter, um, it will all of a sudden uh, click into place um, their true life's purpose, um, what they are here to do. And um, very quickly through learning and mastering all of the techniques and all of the secrets that their guide, their guru wants to share with them, they will be able to shift through realities and um, really manifest all of their heart's desires, uh, they will become a very powerful manifester. And I feel that um, they will bring a lot of positive change uh, to the world. So um, if they have been put on this earth 
um, for a purpose. It is to bring positive change. It is to uh, raise the vibration of humanity. Um, I can see them uh, becoming enlightened to that and uh, afterwards it's almost as if uh, the sky is the limit. They will really become um, unstoppable with a clear vision and also uh, this uh, connection to a higher power and a trust in their own strength, their own inner strength and their own manifesting ability. So this is really beautiful to see. So now that I have covered everything that's on the table, for those of you who are interested, let's have a little look at um, the sex of the child, whether they may be a boy or a girl. So it's an old wife's tale that if you hold a pendant, here I have um, one of my favorite rings um, right on the chain. If you hold this over a pregnant woman's belly, it will swing back and forth. And if we have this kind of movement, then it is a boy. And if we have more of a circular movement like this, it is a girl. So let's ask right now for group four, their child, which one it is. Is it a boy or a girl? Let's see. So what I'm seeing is some pretty definite circles. So I do believe that in your case, it is a girl. Lovely, congratulations. So this has been your reading. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was beneficial. If you enjoyed, please like, share and subscribe for more videos. I post pick a card readings every week and I really do think that you will enjoy your time here. But for now, I'm wishing you a good day or a good night wherever you are. Take good care and I will see you next time. Bye. Hello, group five. Welcome to your reading. So this will be all about your future child. I've really been loving to uh, do these readings so far. We've had four groups. You are the fifth one. Let me light up your candle and then we will get straight to it. So, this beautiful red candle for group five. We'll place it over here. And let's first have a look at the card you chose and start to interpret it. It is just so gorgeous with this lion surrounded by bright red flowers. So, uh, this card corresponds to the rose quartz crystal, which I'm actually, I actually have right here on the table. It is one of my favorite crystals to have around. It just has such a gentle energy. And um, rose quartz is actually a crystal that uh, most of all teaches us self-love and uh, helps us be more gentle to ourselves, be kind to ourselves. And with a message here, a different kind of love, it may be exactly that which your child uh, teaches you how to do. So I am sensing that for everyone in this group, um, your child will very much give you the lesson of self-love um, through the way they connect with you, uh, through the way that they, they uh, love you, they give you that unconditional love. And for some of you, it may be something that you have struggled with in the past. Um, perhaps uh, you come from a home where love was conditional, uh, that you had to be a certain way, act a certain way, um, in order to get love and approval. And your child will show you that you are worthy of love, regardless of um, who you are and what you do. We are all very worthy just by being human, uh, just by uh, being capable of giving and receiving love. Now, there's another message um, that I'm getting, but that will only apply to a few of you. So, um, what I'm uh, sensing, again, uh, this is just for a select few, maybe a couple of people watching this video, it is that um, perhaps uh, your child uh, will actually not be your biological child. You may um, either adopt them or um, be a foster, parent long term for them or um, they may be the child of your partner 
you you may meet someone in your future who is a single parent and um, you will start a family together and um, consider uh, their child or their children uh, just as your own. You will grow to uh, love them so much. So um, this is a kind of love that um, you will experience that uh, perhaps uh, some people may find a bit surprising, a bit unexpected. But again, this child you will love absolutely unconditionally with all of your heart and uh, you will want everything that is good in the world for them. So this is a really beautiful message that I'm getting. I will place your card right here. And now we'll get some oracle cards. Uh, we will look at personality traits. We will look at likes, interests, um, dreams for the future, perhaps even some career paths. We will look at zodiac signs. And also at the end, we'll have a little peek at the sex of the baby. So whether it's more likely to be a boy or a girl. And so let's get started. First of all, with our oracle cards. Let's see for group five over here. What kind of cards do we get? So those two wanted to came up. We have crystals with focus. And then we also have childhood with innocence. All right. Um, this deck will be next. It is a tarot deck which I um, kind of use more like an oracle because the meanings are uh, different from the regular Rider Waite tarot. We have one card coming out and it is Goddess of Fire. And uh, this really goes well with the uh, uh, lion energy. So I do sense um, some Leo energy over here, some fire energy in your group. But we'll see uh, more on that when we draw the months of the year and perhaps we get also some zodiac signs from our little bag. And then we also have Craftsman of Earth. All right. And then let's move on to the next deck. What else is there to know about group five's child? These two wanted to come out. So we have the bear and cedar with leadership. We have also with, um, the spider and passion flower with creative ingenuity. This also came out for another group. So I'm definitely sensing fire uh, vibes, um, Leo vibes again, um, this kind of uh, uh, leadership, taking initiative. Um, I will draw Tara next, okay. What else is there to know about Group 5's child? Alright, all of those cards wanted to come out. Let's have a look at them. So, we have the Six of Cups, Memories, Childhood, Nostalgia. And um, isn't that beautiful? Let's put it over here with Childhood and Innocence and I will explain very soon why. We have the Two of Swords, the Two of Air, Indecision, Avoidance and Confusion. All right, we have the King of Cups, Compassionate, Understanding, Trustworthy, okay. And then we also have the Three of Wands, Goals, Expansion, and Vision. Right, um, we'll get a couple of cards from this deck next. We have Cry for Nature, Mourning for Something Sacred, which seems lost. Interesting. Then we also have Gossamer Princess, communication, relationship work to be done. Okay. Uh, let's get some months of the year. We have September. So September is Virgo and Libra, I think. Uh, what else? Let's get one more. one, this one, August. Okay, so August is either Leo or Virgo. So again, we have the Leo energy going on. Um, and then we also have Virgo. And with the King of Cups, we also have water signs. So uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. 
this is my little bag of uh, traits, attributes, um, hobbies. Um, there's a bunch of things here, even some kind of appearance traits. Let's have a look. Uh, right, these, all of these. So, we have here acting. So, someone likes to act, someone likes to be in the spotlight. Uh, we have the color green, so may, they may really love the color green. It may be their favorite color. We have a spiritual person. So your child will be very spiritual, very in touch with our, that uh, spiritual nature. We have collector. So they may like to collect a bunch of things. It can be uh, plushies, it can be um, some kind of um, collectible cards, uh, maybe like Pokemon or something like that. Um, whatever will be popular at the time in the future. Um, let's see what else. Cycling, so they may very much like to ride their bike and uh, maybe ride their bike around for transport. We also have Taurus as another possible sign. Uh, what else is in here? We have Perfectionist, so uh, very preoccupied with getting things right, uh, with uh, uh, doing things really well. Uh, colorful hair again, so they may be interested in uh, dyeing their hair an uh, unusual color. We have surfing, so this may be an activity that they like to do, going surfing. Uh, outdoorsy, so they love being outside, they love uh, uh, being in nature, perhaps playing sports outside. Um, roller skating is another thing that they may get into. Snowboarding also, so um, I, I can see already a very uh, sporty child who uh, likes to do uh, a bunch of sports. They are very active. Morning person, okay, so they may be an early riser and uh, when they're small you might have the um, kind of uh, surprise that uh, they wake up before you, they wake up at five and then uh, you have no choice but to start your day and if you are not a morning person yourself then I'm really very sorry because it can be very tough, I know. And then we also have calm, so someone who keeps calm and collected in whichever circumstance they are in. Alright, so we have all of the cards on the table, now let's get into some detail over here. So. Um, I'm definitely getting the feeling here that um, your child will love to be in the spotlight. They will love to be the center of attention. With this uh, Leo energy, also with acting, um, it is something that uh, they enjoy doing it. It also comes naturally for them. Um, they have no issues with shyness. They like to perform. And they also get a sense of focus and flow in doing that. So well, when they're into, when they're in the zone, um, when they are trying to embody uh, the character that they're playing, they are really very immersed. They really um, get it right. They very much connect uh, with the essence of that character. You may find that uh, in their everyday life, in their day-to-day -day interactions, they are quite easygoing and uh, chill and relaxed. But um, when they are the center of attention, when they're performing, it's like a sudden shift. They are a superstar, uh, they are a whole different person, uh, very bold, very dramatic. And it is really um, an outlet, it is like an outlet for their own nature because uh, perhaps it is not very much acceptable to be um, as dramatic in our day-to-day -day life, right? So acting may be a bit of an outlet for them, or just performing in general. With the King of Cups here, uh, I can see them being very warm, very loving towards you, uh, towards their siblings and friends and those around you. Um, I can see a very loyal person who always has your back. They will be kind and understanding. And um, if they are an older sibling, um, they will be very protective of the younger ones and uh, really guarding their innocence, uh, being uh, gentle and childlike with them, um, even though they may be 
older, so perhaps your child will be uh, of school age and uh, your other children, their siblings, will be younger, uh, either babies or toddlers, and I can see them actually being very gentle and playing very nicely with them, um, being understanding and patient and very, very loving and protective. This is the kind of uh, feeling that I'm getting. And uh, they would very much love to do that. So uh, even though uh, as they get older, uh, they will also engage in activities that are suitable for their age, um, they will always love to come back to that place of innocence, uh, being carefree, playing, having fun, and uh, uh, just not having to worry about the bigger responsibilities of their world just for a little while. They, they will always uh, love to be uh, childlike and to play. And um, I can see them uh, one day when they grow up just being very good parents, very involved in their children's lives making a lot of uh, time to spend with their children and playing together, spending a lot of quality time and uh, really uh, being silly, being silly and playful with them and uh, uh, very much getting down to their level. I can see here with the bear and cedar with uh, leadership that uh, your child will have a very clear vision of what they like to do. I also see it here with the Three of Wands, goals, expansion, vision. So they uh, may want to make their goals uh, very clear from a very young age. So um, if they say that they want to be an actor or a performer or um, any kind of activity that uh, would involve them being in the public eye, um, I sense that they really mean it uh, and it's not uh, just um, a kind of a fantasy, a profession of childhood, um, some answer that they casually give when someone asks them what they want to be when they grow up. No, this is a, um, a really strong calling for them, um, something that the, they will get in touch with from a very young age and then uh, they will actually be eager to pursue it. I see here with the two of their, um, the two of swords, um, at some point um, in their life they will um, get a little bit confused about the path that they're on, um, perhaps uh, of society's influences, uh, perhaps because of naysayers, uh, uh, people who think uh, differently, they will start to doubt themselves. They will start to doubt whether uh, what they're working towards will uh, pay off in the long run, if it's something that it is truly worth pursuing or um, whether they're just uh, being a bit um, idealistic, a bit uh, dreamy about the path that they're on. So um, I can see them reaching a fork in the road um, at a very important time in their lives when they really have to make a decision and um, they may be very confused about uh, the direction that they're headed in. But I can see here with the goddess of fire is that they will know that uh, they can only be happy by doing the work that feels most meaningful to them and uh, the work, the kind of work that uh, fuels their passion. So they won't be the kind of person who um, is happy um, working a nine to five in an office um, for a company that they don't care about. Um, your child will have a greater aspiration of really following their passion, really uh, following their dreams, uh, doing something uh, meaningful that really lights them up and uh, gets their spark going on the inside. Over here with the Craftsman of Earth next to the card Creative Ingenuity, um, I'm getting the feeling that they will be very much inspired by nature as well as the world around them, uh, both the uh, beautiful and not so pretty sides of it. There is something about uh, the chaos, the almost uh, random unfolding of the world around us that really gets their creative spark going. There is something about that which inspires them. Uh, they won't be the kind of person to look at life through um, rosy colored glasses. 
they will really be uh, capable of acknowledging both the good and the bad and how the two interact with each other and they will actually find inspiration in that and I really see a very down-to-earth person. They will be down-to-earth, um, very much in touch with our human experience, um, very rooted in the practical, which I see here um, even with a red color candle, which is corresponding of the root chakra. So they may feel um, very much at ease in their physical experience and uh, really enjoying uh, a lot of physical activities, which we already saw over here with the different kind of sports. They do like to move, they uh, like to do sports, they uh, want to uh, step on actual soil, um, get messy, because um, they are very much connected with the earth and um, with our uh, physical 3D human experience. That uh, brings them a lot of ease. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that they will have a spiritual nature, uh, quite the contrary. I do think that uh, their spiritual um, experience will be something intrinsic to them, um, that they will always have um, a kind of understanding of spiritual matters, they will have um, a natural understanding of a higher power, a sense of oneness. But uh, this is not something that um, they will feel inclined to practice or pursue too much. So um, they may not be um, that interested in religion or spiritual practices uh, because uh, they gain their own uh, spiritual knowledge and balance from the physical from the practical, the 3D, and it is something that they enjoy very much. They enjoy the beauty in the chaos, in the mess that is this world, and uh, they accept um, everyone exactly how they are and uh, love them for who they are. Um, going back to this uh, lesson of unconditional love, they will be the kind of person to um, offer love to uh, people from all walks of life, no matter what they've been through, no matter how uh, worthy or not uh, they feel of love, your child will have an open heart to all of them. And we see it again with a, a lot of the green colors here on the table and also the color green uh, being mentioned over here. Uh, green is indicative of a heart chakra, so uh, I feel that their heart will always be very open, it will always uh, shine very bright and they will let themselves be guided by their heart in all circumstances. I see here uh, with these two cards, Cry for Nature and Gossamer Princess. Uh, this one says, mourning for something sacred, which seems lost. And uh, the other card speaks of communication and relationship work to be done. Um, I have a feeling that um, for your child, their teenage years will prove somewhat challenging. That um, through engaging uh, more and more with uh, their friends, their grown-up-y kind of activities and the kind of attitudes that come with that age, um, they may become a little bit distant uh, from you, from the family. For a while you may not be as close as you used to and um, um, this may be quite difficult for them. Again, um, even if they are the one who um, imposes some of that distance, um, they will find that experience quite uh, distressing. It's like they really want uh, that family support, that shoulder to cry on, and I feel that it's not gonna take uh, that long to for them to come back around, maybe a year or two where, uh, you know, they are kind of on their own road, trying to discover themselves, trying to um, get into their teenage skin, so to speak, and uh, then they will understand that, you know, it is all right really to um, have that connection to the important people in your lives and, uh, you know, through communication, um, you guys will uh, work on your relationship and everything will be uh, just as good as before, uh, if not better. So you will communicate better, you will uh, feel more bonded and close to each other, uh, perhaps even more than you used to before. 
So this is really beautiful to see. I do sense that uh, your child will be very close to uh, the family, the siblings, and uh, um, they will also have just a few select friends that they will show a lot of loyalty towards and that um, meaningful relationships are very important to them. So, I really do think that I have everything on the table covered. So, uh, now comes that time for the question for those of you who are interested, um, whether the child will be a boy or a girl, we'll do this uh, little pendulum trick, uh, which uh, is a very old uh, method of trying to determine the gender, the sex of the child. So. I will be swinging this ring pendulum and if it goes back and forth like this, that is indicative of a boy and if it kind of swings in circles like so, uh, then that's a girl. So let's see here for group 5, is it a boy or a girl? So I can see a lot of back and forth and this to me is indicative of uh, male energy, so yes, it is a boy. Congratulations! So this has been your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was beneficial. If you liked it, then please like, share and subscribe for more videos. I post pick a card readings every week. I'm sure you will have a great time here. Do consider checking out any of the other groups if you were drawn to more than one of them. But for now, this is where I leave you. I'm wishing you a good day or a good night, wherever you are. Take good care of yourself and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hello, group 6 and welcome to your reading. So today we will be finding out all there is to know about your future child. We will be looking at uh, personality traits, we will be looking at uh, likes, interests, um, what kind of relationship they will have with you or their family, their friends. Um, what kind of uh, road they are most likely to take in life and we'll also be looking at their possible zodiac sign and right at the end we can also have a little peek at the sex of the child so whether they will be a boy or a girl so uh, let's begin I will first just light up your candle real quick the beautiful green candle And let's place it over here next to the other ones. And first thing I'm going to do is um, look at your card together. Let's look at it. So we have the emerald over here with this beautiful cat. She looks like a little shy kitten. And um, the words choose your intention. So what I'm getting from this is that um, your child may be quite a reserved person. Um, they may come off as a little bit shy. That's not necessarily the case. Um, I think uh, they will be quite cautious as to uh, whom they share their love and affection with. Um, they will take some time to warm up to people. And uh, they will not just uh, give their loyalty away to just about anyone. So I think um, any person who will be entering their life will first have to really prove themselves in order to um, get accepted in their uh, closer circle of friends. I see them as um, quite a balanced person and someone who um, always weighs out their options very carefully uh, before uh, proceeding with something new. So this is what I'm getting off your card. And we'll now draw some oracle cards as well as tarot to get the full picture. And I also have some little notes uh, with uh, personality traits, so with likes and interests. So let's have a look at everything together. We have summer solstice with radiance. And we also have ocean with ebb and flow. So... Um, what, what I'm sensing here is that your child uh, may either be born around the summer solstice, that is in late June, um, or another message that is coming is that uh, they may be conceived around that time. Mm. But uh, let's, let's get some more cards to get a bigger picture. Alright, this 
one to take them out. We have number eight with healing. Let's place it over here. It goes beautifully next to the ocean card. Get one more. And we have uh, four of earth, which is the four of pentacles, but uh, this deck is a little bit different. So the meanings are not quite the same as in the traditional Rider Waite. Um, now we'll grab some cards from some other oracle decks. This one wants to come out. It's the rooster and sunflower with communication. What else? This one. The owl and hop with wisdom. All right. Mm. We'll get some tarot cards now. Two of Earth or Two of Pentacles, Balance, prioritiza Prioritization and Playfulness. Alright, place it over here. I do see some Earth energy for some, so uh, this may be uh, Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn. But we'll get some more cards on that. And then we also have the Page of Cups. Sensitive, open-hearted, and intuitive. All right, I have one more oracle book to draw from. What else? What else? Ah, uh, this card came out before. Um, I will put it back into the deck, but I feel the need to mention. I think it was also for group one that this card came out. And um, for them, it was a very particular message that they may have twins. So do you consider the possibility? It may be so for only a few of you, but um, this is a note, this is worth mentioning. And the message here is time to take protection from toxic thoughts or energy, but I will put it back into the deck and get you guys a different card. All right, we have Stardust. Premonition, galactic communications, uh, beginnings and endings. I'll put it over here with a wisdom card. I have a feeling they are connected. And one more. This one. Uh, this one also came out for another one of the groups. I really do want some different cards right now. Um, I typically take them, but in this case I will not. Um, but this card is called the Secret Path. And it says, an irre irresistible pull down a distinct path, ley lines, mystical traditions, all right? But I think it's, it is inevitable when you have so many groups that um, eventually some of the messages will start repeating themselves. But um, I sense there's something unique about your child. So let's find out. Snail space. So it says, slow down, grounding, grounding. Uh, listen for the heartbeat of the earth and subtle energies. All right, um, now let's get some months of the year um, in which they may be born. Mm. Here for group six, months of the year, birth months. And um, that can also give us an indication of the zodiac sign. So we have this one, September. So September is Virgo and Libra. And we also have this one with July. So July is Cancer and Leo. I think that's right. <clears throat> All right. Um, we have here a bag of attributes, interests, hobbies, um, even some uh, physical traits, favorite colors, zodiac signs. Let's draw a few of those. I'm searching these. Oh, that's a lot of them. Let's have a look together. Um, we have reading, so your child might be interested in reading. They might like to read books. Um, we have Aquarius as another possible sign. Let's flip it around. Um, we have the piano, so they might like to uh, play the piano, learn the piano. Uh, business. So they might be tempted in a career in business. 
We have red, the color red, so they might really enjoy that color. We have Virgo mentioned over here, so that would be in line with the September birth month. We have ice skating, so they may really like to do that, go ice skating, enjoy the winter time. Extrovert, so um, it's someone who uh, thrives on uh, company, being surrounded by people. We have camping, so they might enjoy that particular activity and um, you may go camping together when they are small. It's something that they really like to do, being out in nature. We have overachiever, so um, they may be very ambitious and push themselves very hard in order to succeed in life. We have photography, so they may like to take photos and uh, uh, really I see them uh, taking photos of uh, nature scenes, being in the outdoors, being near the ocean and taking photos of the sea, of the ocean. We have yoga, so uh, they might like to try out yoga. Um, they may even start to get into it as they are little children. And yoga is actually very good for little children and it really uh, works very well with their natural flexibility. We have sales, so uh, this is kind of connected to the business aspect. They may be very good at uh, pitching some products, uh, trying to sell them to people and you know they um, will be quite business savvy when they get older. We have here an optimistic person, someone who always sees the bright side of life. We also have genius, so they will be extremely, extremely intelligent, really very, very bright from a very young age. Perfectionist. Okay, so we have overachiever. We also have perfectionist. So um, I sense that uh, they will really have very high aspirations and they will really push themselves very, very hard in life. Uh, we have baking. So this is an activity that um, the two of you might enjoy to do together. You might like to bake uh, cookies, cakes, uh, cupcakes, other treats together. And it's something very fun that you can do with children, uh, even when they're very small. We have gymnastics, okay, so uh, gymnastics is a kind of sport that requires a lot of uh, persistence and a lot of uh, training and I think uh, it really goes well with the kind of mindset that they have. We have Pisces, okay, so another sign came out, they may be a Pisces. Swimming. So if they're a Pisces, I sense that uh, they will be also very comfortable in the water. They would like to go swimming in the ocean, in a pool. It doesn't really matter just being in the water, splashing around. We also have basketball. So this is another sport that they may like to do. Um, caring. They are a very caring person, very loving and affectionate. And also we got babysitting. So uh, they may want to babysit babysit their um, younger siblings or cousins. Um, when they get older, they may also make some money from babysitting. So this is all I got. It's actually quite a lot compared to uh, the other groups. So uh, let's get into it. Over here with the uh, Four of Earth, the Four of Pentacles, um, I'm getting that um, your child will always uh, carry with them uh, this sense of stability, of security within their own life. Uh, perhaps it is something that uh, you will offer to them. Within your family, um, there will, will be a lot of security. Life will be uh, predictable and uh, very much balanced. So you will have a very harmonious home life, uh, which in turn will translate uh, to this uh, feeling inside of them that uh, um, the world, the universe has their back, that all of their needs are met, all of their basic needs are covered. So wherever they go, they will have this uh, sense of security. They will feel balanced and uh, peaceful, knowing that the essentials are covered. And we also see it here with the Two of Pentacles, this uh, message of balance. And uh, they will also have a very clear perspective of what's important and what's not. So uh, I, I think they will never sweat the little things. Um, as children, they won't get uh, too angry or upset about uh, a toy breaking or 
maybe occasionally doing badly on a test. They will have this sense of um, how everything is fixable. If something goes wrong, we can always improve and uh, they will just have this um, clear, bigger picture of what's actually important and uh, meaningful to them. But um, with the Two of Pentacles and also with the Ocean card, Ebb and Flow, um, I sense that um, they may sometimes uh, go back and forth um, on certain things. And it, it may translate to, uh, for example, the way that they show affection. So even though they would love you very much as a child, there may be times when they really want to uh, suffocate you with hugs and kisses and uh, really sweet displays of affection. And other times and they completely reject you. They want nothing to do with you. And, you know, they, they shut the door. And it's not something that you should uh, take personally. It's just uh, part of their character and part of the way uh, uh, they express themselves. And I, I do feel that uh, they may have these variations in emotions. I do sense that um, they know how to bring some balance, but for only very few of you, um, your child may have this uh, predisposition for ups and downs in uh, their mood, their emotions, especially as they get a little bit older. I, I think it is uh, something worth being aware of. Uh, I do believe that under um, good stable circumstances uh, that will not necessarily equate to um, any kind of mood issues, but um, of course um, if there are some uh, more destabilizing experiences happening uh, at some point, it uh, may be so that um, they will find their moods um, really uh, cycling and fluctuating and uh, sometimes feeling very energized and uh, sometimes feeling quite down but that will only apply to a very uh, few of you because overall I'm seeing really a very balanced child who is just uh, uh, prone to be a little bit more uh, back and forth on uh, uh, how they feel and how they express themselves and it's uh, just uh, just a part of their nature, just part of uh, who they are. With um, card number eight here, healing, as, as well with the message of uh, them being caring, I do sense that uh, they, they will have some kind of um, warm healing effect on the people who they meet and the people who uh, they are close to in particular. I sense that um, they may even have this uh, very strong uh, healing energy within their hands. So if you ever, for example, have a headache and they run their hands through your hair, then uh, it will immediately start to go away. Uh, they may discover that um, they are very good at the healing arts. So either it's um, some form of energetic healing like um, acupuncture, Reiki that they become interested in and they will be very gifted at that. But also this uh, may uh, equate to a calling for the field of medicine, nursing. So actually caring for patients, being the one who heals them. And I can see them being very successful uh, with that, especially if it's um, a field that uh, requires a lot of hands-on work. So for example, nursing or surgery or... Uh, midwifery, um, anything of that nature, they will actually be very, very good at them. Um, and really anything that they do with their hands that um, involves some kind of healing, some kind of uh, um, caring interaction with another person. But yes, I do see uh, this calling for the field of medicine, but also the more integrative approaches, energy medicine, if you will. Here with Stardust, um, premonition, galactic communication, beginnings and endings, um, I'm getting the feeling that um, when they're really small, uh, they may get a lot of messages, uh, both in their dream world, um, but also uh, while they're awake, they will be very, very connected with spirit. And um, you may find that um, they will have different downloads about uh, how they came into the world, um, how they chose you as parents. You um, 
may also find that they have a connection with a deceased loved one, an ancestor, or uh, something along those lines. But uh, I, I do feel it, it's going to be at first quite an eerie discovery. Uh, maybe they uh, predict a certain event, they say uh, something in particular will happen, uh, no matter how unli unlikely it may be, and that thing actually happens, and um, at first it may send some shivers down your spine, but uh, then you will realize what a precious gift that is, and uh, I think that um, if uh, they are not discouraged uh, from engaging uh, with, with this kind of spirit connection, it may uh, very well be preserved and grown into their adult life, so they will always have um, this uh, path of direct communication with the spirit world. And I see it here with the Page of Cups, um, the, the intuitiveness of their nature. And I also see that uh, um, they have a very pure heart, really with uh, no hidden agendas, they will not um, fake love or affection in order to uh, get something from you. They will always be very pure at heart and very much uh, driven by their heart's desires. But at the same time, um, I see a lot of practicality and a lot of ground groundedness in their nature. So um, I feel that uh, they may have both uh, water and earth placements in their chart. I'm definitely um, very familiar with that kind of dynamic because my sun sign is Pisces, but my rising sign is Virgo. So um, I really oftentimes uh, feel that uh, uh, dreaminess, that kind of zone out type of feeling that I, I, I get from my Pisces placement. But also at the same time, I'm, I'm very anchored in um, practical manners how to be efficient and how to get stuff done. So I see it over here and I recognize it in your child. Now with this card, uh, snail space, I sense that they may oftentimes be quite methodical um, in um, doing things, in uh, completing any kind of activity. It may also be in regards to their um, perfectionist, so wanting to get every single detail right. And I have to say that Virgo is indeed uh, very detail-oriented as a sign. And they may find that um, actually um, this uh, need to get every single detail right will actually slow them down in the long run. So um, a project that would take uh, someone a week to complete while doing quite all right with it uh, might take your child uh, two weeks just because they really want to nail every single detail, they want to double check every source and really find the best images to put there on each page of the project and perhaps uh, getting a little bit lost in the details um, instead of uh, focusing on the essentials. But uh, since they're so bright, they may very well be a genius, uh, have extremely high um, IQ being way, way, way above average. So um, they will really, because of that, uh, they will be actually quite hard on themselves and um, really have high expectations of themselves, um, comparing themselves to the best out there. And uh, n not just in one field of interest, but in every field. And uh, you can imagine how difficult that is because uh, no one person can uh, master everything that there is in the world. So uh, this may be a little bit burdensome at times. One thing that they could do is uh, uh, go out there in nature, um, get barefoot, get, get grounded and really connect to the rhythm of life, um, get themselves out of the headspace and uh, into a more um, sensory field of perception. Over here with um, summer solstice, the summer solstice cards, and also the rooster and sunflower communication, um, I can see this uh, bright energy of the sun. And 
um, because this refers to communication, um, I get the feeling that they will be very positive um, in their interactions, both with you, uh, uh, the family, their siblings, uh, but also with their friends and re really just about anyone that they meet. Uh, we know that they are an optimistic person and they will really uh, bring that into their interactions and their conversations and they will always put a smile on people's faces because um, they just have this uh, positive outlook on life which is um, actually very contagious. So. Um, they're the kind of person to uh, brighten up someone's day and really um, lift up their mood and make them feel so much better. And this is uh, uh, quite possibly a trait that, that they will uh, very much benefit from in the, their job, their profession, in the field of healing. So they will not only be healing the body, but also the heart of the people they interact with. So I feel that is really beautiful. We also have here the Wisdom card, the Owl and Hop. So, um, hops are actually very calming um, when you brew them as a tea. You know, hops are also used in beer making, but their effect is just a very calming one. Hops are um, quite efficient in reducing anxiety. And um, since Wisdom is mentioned on the card, I do feel that um, as they get older, they will gain a, a lot more wisdom and a better perspective on their life. They will be able to see uh, clearly how um, sometimes they uh, slow themselves down through their own uh, perfectionism, through their own uh, very high ambition. They will gain a better perspective. They will learn to be more gentle with themselves and uh, really come to uh, a place of a balance and uh, ease and self-acceptance, which is um, really a beautiful kind of wisdom to be getting. So uh, if they may appear a bit high-strung as children, um, as they enter their adult years, their 30s and 40s, um, they will actually uh, be a lot more calm a lot more at ease, comfortable with themselves and uh, they will lose this feeling of um, having to prove themselves because they will essentially know their worth and they will appreciate all of their wonderful qualities. So, this is all that I could get here from your cards. Now, the last thing that I want to do for those of you who are interested in is to swing my little pendulum, my uh, little ring here, which uh, is very dear to me. I have worn it every day for many, many years. And we will be then asking the question, is it a boy or a girl? So it is an old wife's tale that if you hold a pendulum or a ring like this over a pregnant person's belly, uh, the way that it swings will um, showcase uh, the sex of the baby, so if it has a back and forth motion like this, then it is most likely a boy. And if it does this kind of circular motion, then it is a girl. So let's find out here for group 6's child. What is it? Is it a boy or a girl? You know, this might be uh, kind of undetermined. It was kind of an oval type of move. And let me try again. Yeah, so there is a feminine energy. Again, it's swinging in a kind of oval motion. So there is a blend of feminine and masculine energies. That's very interesting. So, again, <laughs> it may be a girl um, with um, some more uh, masculine, more um, authoritative uh, traits, or it may be a boy who um, embodies some feminine traits. They may be a bit more gentle and, uh, and caring and open than uh, most 
boys or men would be. So uh, this was actually the first group where the pendulum couldn't give me a very clear answer. So uh, take it as you will. Um, let yourself be guided by your intuition in this case. But this has been your reading. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was beneficial. If you liked it, if you enjoyed, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. For more videos, I post pick a card readings every single week and I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy your time here. But for now, I am wishing you a good day or a good night wherever you are. Take good care and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hello group 7! So you are my last group today. I'm still so excited and so pumped I could have done seven more groups to be honest. I really enjoy each and every one of these readings. But I'm happy to end with you here, lucky number seven. Today we'll be finding out everything there is to know about your future child. We will be looking at personality traits, zodiac sign, their likes, their interests, what kind of path they are most likely to take in life, what kind of relationship they may have with you. And also right at the end we will try to have a little sneak peek at the sex of the baby. Will they be a boy or a girl? So with that being said, let me just light up your candle. The beautiful yellow candle. It's such an uplifting and energizing color. All right. Let's place it over here. And you chose a card um, representing Peridot or Peridot. Uh, you can pronounce it both ways. Both are correct. And the words on the card are so much life in you. So um, this really makes me think of a very energetic child. One who is always on the go, always so curious about the world around them. Um, you can see four little critters here on the card. We have the squirrel, the sparrow, the snail and the butterfly. And they are also gentle in nature. I think uh, most children um, love all of these animals, including snails. I myself used to play with snails so much as a child. And um, I believe that your child will have a love for all animals around them. I think um, they will be a very active child and also a very active grown-up. Uh, they will really love the sports and um, outdoors. And I see them as always on the go, always up to something. Perhaps uh, sometimes uh, getting into a little bit of trouble because of that, but it's never ill-intended. They never do it in a mean way. They are just uh, very uh, fun-loving and very energetic. And uh, I do feel that uh, your child might actually have a pretty hard time sleeping, or at least they will not enjoy sleeping because uh, they always want to explore, they always want to play and have fun. So let's get some oracle cards on the table to get uh, a few more details about this uh, beautiful, fun-loving energy. We will get oracle cards as well as tarot. And also some uh, traits, like personality traits and likes, interests. Let's have a look what we have here. We have, first of all, forest with breath. And we also have wind with activation. So there is uh, something uh, very nature loving about uh, the energy. A child who is very active, yes, activation, and uh, one who really loves the great outdoors. Okay, we've got these two cards. Um, this one came out in, um, I think, group one. Let's have a look at them. We have the Seven of Water, Seven of Cups, and we also have the Eight of Fire, which is the Eight of Wands, but um, this is not your usual tarot deck, so uh, the meanings of the cards are ever so slightly different. Okay, let's get some more oracle cards. What else there is to know about group 7's child? Um, these cards are usually um, jumping out quite fast from the deck, so it's interesting that um, I'm giving them now quite a shuffle. Um, 
there have been a lot of groups, so I think the energy is a little bit sticky. Maybe I should have cleansed it. Oh, let me cleanse it real quick. I've already interacted with the energy of so many groups, so I, I do think that uh, the cards need a little reset. Yes. So, let's see. How about now? Yep. So, we have the salamander and black pepper. Inspiration. Alright. And what else? Let's get one more. Alright, we have the sheep and blackberry with devotion. Okay. Um, up next, we have the tarot. Okay. Let's see what's in there. So that's only one card. So we have the two of pentacles, balance, prioritization, it's kind of hard for me to say that word, and playfulness. Okay, and we did get one more. We have the Queen of Swords, brilliant, experienced, and humorous. You know what I'm seeing over here? It's an interesting pattern. Quite a few of the cards that you got, um, I've already seen in some other groups. And th there's obviously quite a lot of cards in uh, every deck, so um, it's interesting how the energy is picking up from all the others that have been before. Let me meditate on that for a moment because I think it may be happening for a reason that uh, um, all of the cards are actually repeating themselves. Not all, but many that are on the table right now. We have Glimpse, Indigo, Rainbow, Crystal Children and Beyond. Okay, this is really beautiful. I can't wait to get to that. And one more card. This one, all right, scary to fly. So the right moment, sensing out the right timing. All right, um, let's look at months of the year. So with a possible hint of uh, their birth month. So uh, what kind of um, zodiac sign they might be. So we have the month of March, that's Pisces or Aries. Let's get one more. This one. And we have the month of November, so that is either Scorpio or Sagittarius. Okay, now I will get my little bag of traits. It can be personality traits, likes, um, interests, um, even some physical appearance traits over here, favorite colors, there's a bunch of things. So, how about these? Okay. We have a lot, uh, but let's go through them. First of all, we have brown hair, so your child may have brown hair. We have football, that's a sport that they might like. Um, spiritual, so there's something spiritual about their nature, the way they interact with the world. Uh, they may like camping, as I mentioned, uh, they have a love for the outdoors. Basketball is another sport. I think we may have a lot of sports over here because again, I mentioned them being quite an active person and always going from one thing to the other, hiking. So uh, they may uh, dip into uh, a whole bunch of sports uh, before they find their favorite crafting. So they might be quite crafty and like to create new things with their hands. Uh, what else? Friendly, they do have a friendly nature. Okay, logical, all right, so that's always nice to see. They have a sharp intellect and um, they um, process the world uh, through their mind, through their head. Um, baseball is another sport they enjoy. Blue eyes, so we have brown hair and blue eyes. That makes for a beautiful, beautiful combination. Um, martial arts, okay. So they may be interested in that also. Um, Leo is another sign that came through. So they may also be a Leo. Morning person. So liking to wake up in the morning. Uh, again, if you are not a morning person yourself, you might have 
quite an unwanted surprise uh, when your child wakes you up at 5 a.m. and they're ready to start their day. Um, I can tell you it's not very fun. Red hair, so another possibility would be that they have red hair. Okay. Ice hockey, they might be into that also. Very, very active, a very active child. Um, surfing, so they will, they may like uh, winter sports just as much as uh, sports you can do in the summer. They enjoy some adventure. Drawing might be something that they're very much into um, when they're little children and that may be a very good way for them to um, express their feelings and emotions when they can't actually put them into words just yet. We have Aries, so that confirms the um, March time frame, March birth month, and there is quite a fiery energy coming off of this group, I have to say. Um, the color purple might be one that they enjoy. The color purple is also one that's associated with intuition and connection to your higher self. We have calm, so um, it they may be very calm in their emotions, so um, quite unfazed, easygoing. They may like reading. They can be quite intuitive, again, uh, going back to that purple color. Smooth talker, so they may have a way uh, of getting themselves out of trouble through their words. They can come up with uh, all sorts of stories, uh, some more believable than others. We also have Aquarius, that's another possible sign. We have painting, so drawing and painting might be two activities that they will very much enjoy when they're little as well as when they grow up. Uh, we have here soccer. And then we have loyal. So these were all of the attributes, all of the traits. Um, there was a lot here. I grabbed a whole handful. But again, um, I think it is for a reason. And I think it really ties into what I was telling you earlier that with uh, the shuffling of each deck, some cards would come out that I have seen already in some of the other groups. And uh, let me tell you why I think that may be the case and why I felt it was important and I just uh, didn't, I didn't just put them back into the deck. What I think is going on here is that at the surface level, your child uh, may appear to pick up some of the traits, some of the interests, the same preoccupations as their peers. All right, so they may be very good at mirroring their friends, the people around them, which uh, may mean that um, if one of their friends uh, speaks a certain way, uh, they may, may start doing that also. If uh, all of a sudden uh, the group decides that uh, one particular game is cool, they will be uh, very quick to jump on board with that. Um, and I don't think that they are doing so from a willingness to please. That is not the case over here. I told you, this is just surface energy. What is um, going on below, so to speak, is that your child is part of a very special generation of children. We see it here with a glimpse card. It says, Indigo, Rainbow, crystal children and beyond. So um, these have been three waves of children who came to the planet in order to uplift humanity, to raise our vibration so that we can all ascend to a higher dimension, to basically heal our world so uh, we can move on from our limited 3D reality into more, into a more expansive 5D one. So there is a lot of uh, pure healing energy with these children. And what's also very special about them is that um, they are very connected with the oneness of a soul, the oneness of energy, of spirit. So uh, 
it just so happens that um, every time they meet someone, they will very easily mirror that person's energy, the way that the person talks, the way they interact, they may pick up um, some of their gestures, some of their tics, the way they speak and the way they act. And the reason um, for that is, again, uh, not to impress them, um, not because they want to appear cool in any way. No, it's nothing like that. It's just because these children are so in tune with the energies of others, with the energies of of the planet and the oneness of us all that almost at an unconscious level they almost merge with um, those around them energetically speaking so this is um, quite a beautiful thing because it does go both ways so um, whatever um, attitudes uh, get mirrored onto your child over here they can in turn um, learn to uh, take ownership of that, take ownership of their emotions and uh, reflect them towards the world. And uh, in doing that, they can uplift those around them, uh, shift their mindsets, open the gate to um, a more positive, higher vibration for the people uh, they meet, but also for the world as a whole. So, this is a very, very special child. And I can see their um, connection with source energy is very strong. Again, we have uh, the color purple and their intuitiveness being mentioned over here. I see here with a seven of water. Um, this is a card that speaks of community. It speaks of sharing the resources. Um, this is um, a small lake in the middle of a savanna. It's a place where um, all animals um, congregate in order to drink that water, nourish their bodies, and there's no competition. It is a place of uh, safety and community for all species. So what I'm seeing over here um, in regards to your child is that they will always be uh, the kind of person who believes in that a spirit of community believes in uh, sharing with other people, uh, making the happiness of others just as essential as their own. So from a very young age, they will have um, a special interest in making other people happy. And sometimes it may also override their own will. So they may wear certain clothes or eat certain foods that perhaps they don't enjoy. Um, just in order to please you, just because you ask them to and they really want to uh, make you happy. They really do care very much about uh, um, keeping others content and happy. And uh, they're also very devoted to the people closest to them. We see here with the sheep and blackberry. So family is important for them. Family connections are essential. They need to be part of that tribe. I can sense that um, you will always have a strong bond that really goes beyond words and um, you will be uh, feeling each other even if you're at a distance and uh, you are not in touch in that particular moment. You will realize that you can sense your child's emotions and uh, it may be the other way around that uh, they can sense you from afar. I can see here with a salamander, also with the aid of fire, that they will have this um, very fiery nature, fiery energy. Um, that uh, doesn't mean that they will be um, hot-tempered in any way. They will just have a very strong drive in life. Um, in their early years, it might express that itself as stubbornness. For example, um, if they want something like a new toy, they will be very adamant about it and they will want it now. Uh, there will be a lot of impatience associated with it. But um, as they get older, I see them uh, uh, putting that energy into more, um, into some more acceptable outlets. So I definitely see them trying out a lot of different sports spending a lot of time in the outdoors and uh, really um, using up their energy in that way. 
and just being very athletic in general. And with the um, aid of fire here, um, I'm also getting again that feeling of uh, community, uh, them loving to be around family, around their siblings, around their friends, really valuing that a lot, really cherishing all of the moments that uh, they spend together with the people dearest to them. And um, they are not in any way a loner, um, quite the opposite. They are actually uh, very much in need of, uh, very much in need uh, of having people around them. They always want to be near other people. And they may sometimes get very sad if um, they have to be by themselves for any length of time. So they will always be searching for that company of others. Uh, when they are small, they will always insist uh, for you or others to play with them. So they will dislike playing alone. And uh, as they get older, uh, you may find that they have uh, quite a large group of friends, first of all, because they are so likable, because uh, they so very easily connect with other people's energy, but also from their own um, very strong need to to connect and to be a part of a tribe, so to speak. I can see them uh, being quite sharp and witty and always finding the right words in a conversation. They have this talent in speaking, so oftentimes they will use it to their advantage. So as they become more and more aware of it, how they could, uh, for example, um, come up with different excuses to um, explain uh, perhaps some of their naughtier behavior, they will really start to master that art of speaking. And they will be quite uh, charming at it too. I see a very playful person here with the two of earth, always up to something. Occasionally it can be shenanigans, it can be pranks. Not ill-intended, never ill-intended, but uh, I see them as a... L I see that they love to have a good laugh. So it may be that um, in their school years uh, you may get some notes or some phone calls from their school about uh, uh, pranks that uh, them and their friends have done on the teachers. They have a very bright imagination. So um, at some point in their life, I feel that uh, that might be uh, the way in which they have fun. But I don't see them uh, getting into any kind of uh, real trouble. So uh, it will just be very innocent things, kind of like uh, Fred and George Weasley in Harry Potter. And um, I see your child as uh, still having a very strong sense of uh, direction in their lives. So um, I, I think they want to be successful. I think they uh, want to pursue some great things, have a successful career path, become very good at what they're doing. Um, I'm not getting any obvious signs of um, some kind of call in terms of profession, profession and career, but um, I do see that uh, if they're interested in pursue sports into their adulthood, that uh, it may be an avenue that will bring great achievements if they so desire to um, do that. But one thing that I'm seeing here with the card uh, Scared to Fly is that um, perhaps your child will take a little bit longer than their peers to um, fly out of the nest, so to speak. It may appear to others around them, like some kind of blockage, like um, they wouldn't necessarily understand. Uh, they may think that they are um, slow to grow up. But I think um, in connection to the fact that um, they are so very attached to uh, their little tribe and their family, the people whom they love, I think it uh, might just be um, this uh, fear of uh, separation, of um, not having that kind of support around them that um, they are used to having. It is a scary thing to move out of the home, to uh, embark on a new adventure for some, not for everyone. Some people are um, very eager to um, get out of their parents' house and uh, start experiencing um, adult life and everything that encompasses. 
uh, I can see it's a little bit different here with your child. They may be um, very attached to you and uh, their home environment. The two of you will be very close. So um, just be aware that they may need a little bit more of that support and encouragement to get them moving on their own path in life. And it may be um, in this case that they will never really move uh, that far away from home. They uh, may like to stay in the area in their hometown or home city, um, study there or uh, take up a job there. And uh, that would make them very happy as, lo as long as they're near the people whom they care for. But uh, this card also talks about the right timing. So um, it is going to be a bit like a click for them. And when the time comes, they will actually feel confident and secure to start adulting on their own and uh, start their own life and perhaps their own family. So they're going to be at ease with that, but they may just take a little bit longer than most of their peers. So now that I have covered everything that's on the table here, we can have a little peek at the possible sex of your child, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. This is um, an old wife's tale, um, an old method of trying to determine the gender. You need a pendulum or what we have here is a ring on a chain. And the story goes that if you hold this over a pregnant woman's belly, um, if it's a boy, then it's going to swing back and forth like this. And if it's a girl, it's going to swing more like this in circles. So. Let's have a look. For group 7, over here, is their child a boy or a girl? So, I'm seeing quite a definite back and forth movement. So, I would say that in this case, it's a boy. Congratulations! So, this has been your reading today. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was beneficial. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more pick a card readings. I post these videos every week and I'm sure you're gonna have a great time here. But for now, I am wishing you a good day or a good night wherever you are. Take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye!